Hi everyone, so I made a post on Threads, which is a new social media if you haven't heard about it. But basically it said, calling all artists, is there anything you struggle with when it comes to your sketchbook? Any goals you have for it that you hope to meet? And I just kind of threw this out there because I just wanted to see what people had to say. And it got 93 likes, but 53 replies? And I feel like I can't just let it sit in the void like that. I kind of want to make a video about your replies and see if like, you know, there's other people like you and maybe there's some things we can all work on together with our sketchbooks. So I'm just going to start with like the top and just go and read some random ones. Um, and I'll include screenshots of who wrote them. So if you want to treat this like a podcast, put it on the background. You can do some sketching or whatever you want, but here are your sketchbook goals. So I'm just gonna start here. My sketchbooks are more for ideas, rough sketches, then I digitize it, but my problem is that I don't tend to finish sketches. I tend to lose track of my sketches as I tend to buy and half use too many sketchbooks. I feel like I used to be like that. I used to not use sketchbooks all the way through, especially when I was younger, I used to kind of get bored halfway through and start a new one. But nowadays I just kind of grin and bear it and use the sketchbook all the way through because I just feel so much more satisfied that way when I make use of the entire book. It just like feels very fulfilling. And um, I kind of treat it as a challenge to use up all the empty ones that I have. This person says, the lack of backgrounds there are. I say to myself that I'm going to practice them more, but I just can't for some reason. And the amount of sketches compared to actually fully completed art. I don't know what that means. If that means there's a lot more sketches than completed art or a lot more completed art than sketches. But yeah, I don't really think I do a lot of like um, landscapes or backgrounds. But I don't think you necessarily need to like have backgrounds to your sketches. But if you mean like drawing landscapes in nature and like more like scenes, I guess I don't really do that either. And I never really thought about the fact that I don't do that. But now I'm like thinking like I never really just draw a scene. Maybe it's because that's just not the kind of art I tend to make. But I never really thought about that recently. Finding inspo. I always want to branch out of drawing the same typical stuff like portraits or food. In some replies to them, I'd recommend studies, find things you want to draw, break them down into each element. It helps you find small things that you enjoy drawing. I think a really good way to like try to learn to draw new things is to use Pinterest. And the reason why I'd say Pinterest and not like Google Images is because Pinterest will give you suggested photos based on what you're currently looking at. So if you're looking at a picture of like a dog, it's going to show you more dog photos, but there's also going to be some like other animals mixed in there and you can kind of go down a rabbit hole of different pins and see a bunch of random photos that might strike inspiration and just draw them. Just draw them, treat it as a study. And I think that's what really helped me like develop my visual library, which is basically the stuff you have in your head that you know how to draw because you've drawn them before. The more stuff you draw, the bigger your visual library would be. This person says drawing in it. Oh, and I really need to stop tearing out pages that I'm not happy with. I kind of, I think uh, this is a common problem. People are afraid to draw in it. And when they actually do, they feel like it looks like they feel like it doesn't look good. So they rip the page out and they get frustrated and then they don't want to draw on it anymore. I think the only way to get over this is to not rip out pages and to let your sketchbook be messy. Try to like ruin it. Like, don't worry about it looking nice. It's supposed to help you improve your art so that the illustrations you do can look nice. Your sketchbook itself doesn't have to be the thing that looks nice, but it, it totally can if you want. Just uh, try to treat it like, like it doesn't matter because it's just supposed to be where you learn, especially if you're a beginner. It's a really good way to learn and to have so much space to study and explore what you want. Now for a quick break to thank this video sponsor, which is Vograce. Vograce is a company that makes all sorts of different products like acrylic keychains, enamel pins, washi tape, stickers. There's so many different things you can make. There's also wooden pins, lots of stuff you can make on Vograce. And I've worked with them in the past and I love the quality of their products. I've always been very satisfied with what I've gotten. And I think they're most known for their acrylic keychains. If you see those like fancy acrylic keychains that are like glittery or have epoxy on one side, shiny double-sided plastic keychains, 
That's probably where they got made. What I really like about them is you can choose from a bunch of different clasp options. There's so many different shapes. There's like a star, a, a bunny, a cat one, and a bunch of different colors as well. And there's so many different finishes you can choose from. I tend to just go with the basic acrylic keychain, but there's lots of different customization options. And I got three new designs made with them this time. I got a betta fish keychain, I got a capybara, and I got a frog with wings. And I also got an old design remade because I wanted to have it back in stock. I also tried a new product for the first time, which are their wooden pins, and I absolutely love the quality of them. The print looks really, really crisp, and it has a nice shine to it. The wooden part of it is really nice as well, and I chose pink heart clasps for them. With their enamel pins and other pin products, you can choose between different clasp colors and shapes. I just really love all the customization that's available there. They also have really great customer service and they'll help you out with your artwork and any questions you have on how to properly set up your files. And what I also really like about them is the minimum order quantity is very low, so you don't have to order like a hundred of everything. You can get quite a low minimum order quantity, especially with their stickers. You can order a very small amount of stickers. I would highly recommend Vograce if you have some products that you need to have made for like an artist alley or an art market. They're very nice quality and I haven't had any problems with them. So thank you so much to Vograce for sponsoring this video and sending me some samples. And everything you see here, you can also grab on my shop. All the keychains are there. And if you wanna check out Vograce for yourself, I'll have links and other information in the description for you. So thanks to Vograce and on to the rest of the video. I always struggle to start something, the blank page. I always look for something to inspire myself and make the effort to draw something, even if it's an anatomy study or something cute and silly. My goal is to draw at least one simple thing every day, even though it's not perfect. Yeah, drawing something every day is a really good goal. I feel like I used to draw every single day. Now I draw mostly every day, but some days I don't. And the thing that usually stops me is my hand would be too sore if I drew every single day because I can't just like stick to one small thing, I'll, I'll end up going overboard some days. I don't know. It's also just me not making time for my sketchbook all the time. Filling up the page. I think a really good way to fill up your pages more is when you sit down to sketch, look back through your old pages and fill in little gaps here and there with random sketches to warm up. And this can help you f slowly fill out your sketchbook a little bit more as you go. My sketchbooks are either entirely full of ugly practice sketches or perfect near fully finished pieces, no in between. I think that's actually like a good thing. Like you have a mix of really messy stuff for practice and you have a mix of finished stuff too. Um, that sounds like a good balance to me, but if it's not the balance you want, um, just I guess try not to finish things too much, maybe. I guess I don't really have fully finished stuff, but I think I have some things that are almost finished, some things that are like colored sketches, maybe just like coloring in your sketches and not like fully rendering them can be a good way to bridge the gap between those two things. Trying not to rip or hide pages because I don't like them. If I feel like doing that, I tend to just stick a post-it note above the drawing. That's a really good way to avoid that. I think it's really good to just like cover your page instead of rip it out because then you can still make use of it. Drawing in it consistently, in my head, each page has to be perfect and it feels like I can't meet those expectations, I just don't draw. Oh, if it feels like I can't meet those expectations, I just don't draw. A goal I have is to accept the ugly pages so I can draw more. That's a really good goal. I think a good way to accept the ugly pages is even when you're you're like, you sit down to draw and you're like, oh, this is not turning out, just, just keep going with it and try to accept it because I think sometimes you have to get through those pages to get to the pages that you like. It's kind of like a necessary process. I think I get stuck on perfectionism a lot. When I was a child, my friends always wanted to look at my sketchbooks and I'm in the habit of needing to have finished work in there instead of studies or material practice. That's true too. I always kind of have in the back of my mind that my sketchbook is going to be viewed by people because I show it on social media and I film sketchbook tours and I film myself drawing in it. So I might have slightly more finished looking stuff at times, but I definitely have some uh, really messy pages. I like having sort of a mix between the two. Finishing one before buying and starting a new one. I have over 10 sketchbooks, but I've only ever completed one. I used to be like this when I was younger. I think I kind of already talked about this, but I really like to fully finish sketchbooks now instead of starting new ones because it's just really fulfilling. And at the end of the day, you're still drawing no matter which book it's in. 
and the feeling of a fresh sketchbook can be motivating to finish the one you're currently on. I'm trying to loosen up. I want my sketchbook not to be quite so organized. I want to experiment with color and materials. I find it hard convincing myself that my sketchbook doesn't have to be perfect and neat. I think a good way to loosen up is to draw faster, like do quick sketches. If you draw slowly and agonize over small details, it's going to end up being stiff and you're going to be a bit more perfectionistic with it. I think sketching quickly and like drawing more fast has been a really good way for me to not be so precious with my sketches. I think also in uh, art school when we did life drawing, there were so many like one minute poses, 30 second poses. And I think this is a really good way to loosen yourself up. Maybe try doing gesture gesture drawings like that in your sketchbook and um, use it as a way to just like know that not everything has to be finished and try to do gesture drawings in five minutes, one minute, 30 seconds, that kind of thing to be more consistent. Consistency is definitely a hard thing when it comes to sketchbooks and it's something I want to be better at as well. I want to draw more often, but it's really hard when I bought a giant sketchbook that I I really need to buy smaller sketchbooks. I think having smaller sketchbooks actually can be more motivating because it feels like you're filling it faster because it's smaller. My sketchbook is so big, I kind of get like I don't know why I bought another big one. I, I just finished a large sketchbook like last year and I was like, okay, I'm not going to get a sketchbook this big again. But then I ordered my current sketchbook online and I just didn't really realize how big the dimensions were. So that's my fault. I hate it. For no real reason, I go from one of the best spreads I've ever done to one of the worst. It's like my sketchbook is gaslighting me and I hate it. Always temporary though. I think this happens to me too. I'll be like, wow, I'm so happy with that spread. I'm going to do another really good spread tomorrow. And then tomorrow, it's like, I don't know how to draw anymore. I think it just, it just kind of happens. I don't know. Like you can't really do your best work every day. So maybe on the days where you're drawing really well, try to draw a little bit more to squeeze some more art out of that good mood. I find that working in mediums other than pencil feels scary to me, even though I'm good at marker illustrations and painting. It's still intimidating to me and I'm trying to work on that. I wonder if that's because you don't want to like waste your supplies in just a sketchbook or if you don't want to ruin your sketchbook because you're not as like confident with sketching with those materials. I kind of know what you mean though, like sometimes it can be hard to use like nice stuff in your sketchbook. And um, drawing with pencil is just really fun and it's really comforting because it's kind of what you grow up doing and there's nothing wrong with just using pencil. Maybe you can slowly start by coloring your pencil sketches with other materials. I guess you can't really color pencil with markers because it might clog the nib of the marker, but maybe with other things that have color and you can slowly add more and more color as you go. But you also don't have to if you don't want to, but if it is something you want to do, then you can ease yourself into it or color in the background of your sketches with markers and then you can sort of like work yourself up to it. I love sketchbooks with a tooth to them. Unfortunately, I draw mostly with pens and they work best on smooth papers. Heck, I might be ruining my favorite pens by using textured paper. I think I also ruin my art supplies by accident because I tend to use marker on pencil and I use marker on toothy paper. I don't really preserve my art supplies very well. I just kind of use them however I want. And I, I think I just like prioritize drawing over conserving the supplies. I think I'm at a point where I'm very comfortable using all my art supplies however I want in my sketchbook and not really worrying about if I'm going to ruin them. Um, but maybe this is not a good thing sometimes. I guess I don't have the most expensive stuff uh, for my sketchbook use, like it's not like they're Copic markers or anything like that or fancy ink pens. I'm scrolling through all of these replies and there's so many repeat comments. Like a lot of people have the same struggles and the same goals when it comes to their sketchbook. And I think that's just really cool that everyone is so similar sometimes when it comes to uh, artists and what we draw and how we think of our sketchbook. So if you'd like to sort of be comforted if you're having a really hard time with your sketchbook or you have some goals that you want to complete in your sketchbook, I will link this post in the description. You can go read everything that everyone's saying because it's really cool. There's so many comments and I really hope you enjoyed me reading off just like a couple of them and discussing what I, what I think of your sketchbook goals and I hope we can all meet our sketchbook goals together.
So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.